Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today, Friday, November 9th, 2012. This first article I have for you is defector couple returns to North Korea from South. A North Korean refugee couple has returned to their homeland after being lured to South Korea where they lived for four years. It says the couple were taken away to South Korea by a dint of gimmicks, appeasement and manipulation of brokers and agents of the South Korean intelligence agency where they suffered a miserable life. They came back on September 11th, keenly aware that they were cheated by them and that their stay would only bring death to them. So apparently they were um, they were basically set up to be uh, provocateurs. A month later, saboteurs, a month later, this uh, refugee claimed he was arrested after entering his homeland in an attempt to blow up a statue of its late leader, Kim Il-sung. He soon uh, he said he had been promised handsome rewards by South Korean agents if he had succeeded in, in the mission. Finishing up, about 24,000 refugees have settled in the South since 1950, 1953 Korean War. The North customarily describes them as human scum who betrayed their country. Six uh, Tibetans set themselves on fire in two days. Another person in ethnic Tibetan parts of China has burned himself to death in protests against Beijing's rule, activists say, a day after... Five similar self-immolations were reported. I'm sure this has to do with the uh, changing of the guard, so to speak, in China. C CIA's Petraeus is to testify in Benghazi next week. I saw this November 8th, 2012, this article. And then, of course, I saw this. CIA Chief Petraeus resigns over an affair. So all of a sudden, he just resigns over an affair. Head of the CIA, right? Can't cover that up or anything. But it reminded me of this article. Uh, actually, I, yeah, I had it from yesterday. Obama plans drastic cabinet shakeup. Clinton, Geithner, Panetta, Holder, all could be gone. David Petraeus was an option for the next uh, replacement for Leon Panetta for the Department of Defense uh, Secretary. But uh, who really knows what happened with the whole thing? I think people are making a bigger deal out of it than what it is as far as Libya. I see that in the common boards. Oh, maybe we can find out what happened now after the elections. And... Um, Basically, it's what CIA operators were denied requests for helping the Benghazi attack sources say. Just like the Marines didn't have uh, ammunition in Egypt when the whole thing was going on when that Prophet Muhammad video was released. Um, so someone got in there and told him to stand down, and now he's not going to answer for it. But like I said, the real argument should be, why did they even invoke a regime change at all to begin with? Clinton stepped down probably days after inauguration, so that sounds nice. Maybe she'll start her presidential run next. She intends to step down as Secretary of State that will take place uh, likely days after Obama's second inauguration in January. But these people usually do disappear um, after all the crimes that they committed. You know, what is it, Gonzalez, the Attorney General, and, um, you know, Rumsfeld, all the same suspects, you know. They all just disappear, right? You know, and then, uh, you know, years later, like Iraq and Afghanistan, people are pissed off at the American people. They're not pissed off at those types of people. And can they be held accountable? No, they won't. But a brave soul that works inside this system and brought some of the result of these orders to light. And, um, you know, even the own his own American people, you think they would want to know that, you know, hey, the blood, this blood's on your hands there. People, you might want to know about this, but no, see, they don't want to know about it. They think it's justified. And then they wonder why the uh, Muslims in other countries are burning the American flag. PFC Bradley Manning offers guilty plea in WikiLeaks case. Manning's civil, civilian defense attorney revealed the offer Wednesday during a pre-trial hearing that continues Thursday. Manning isn't pleading guilty to the offenses charged by the government. He's offering to take responsibility for less serious offenses that are encapsulated within the charge uh, charge crimes, and uh, I wonder how he um, how he got to offer this guilty plea. Well, either way, we know of what the CIA's harsh interrogation techniques. They would not let you rest day or night. Stand up, sit down. Stand up, sit down. Don't sleep. Don't lie on the floor. One prisoner said through a translator. The detainees were also forced to listen to rap artist Eminem's Slim Shady album. The music was so foreign to him that it made him frantic. Sources say. You have the attention grab, forcefully grabs the shirt to the prisoner and shakes him, attention slap, an open-handed slap aimed at causing pain and triggering fear, the belly slap, 
uh, also the long time standing described as the most effective prisoners are forced to stand handcuffed with their feet shackled to an eye bolt in the floor for more than 40 hours exhaustion and sleep deprivation are the effective uh, most effective in yielding confessions the cold cell which the prisoners left to stand naked in the cell kept near 50 degrees throughout the time in the cell the prisoner is doused with cold water and of course waterboarding and I saw articles from like a year or two ago about how alleged torture victims could sue Rumsfeld. But then look at this. From November 8th, 2012, alleged torture victims can't sue Rumsfeld. Federal Appeals Court in Chicago ruled that two American contractors allegedly tortured by U.S. forces in Iraq can't sue the former Secretary of Defense. Supreme Court weighing genetic privacy from November 8th as well. The Supreme Court justices are to meet privately Friday to weigh whether, uh, whether they will hear a major genetic privacy case testing whether authorities may take DNA samples from anybody arrested for a serious crime. A private meeting. The, the case has wide-ranging implications. 21 states and the federal government have regulations requiring suspects to give a DNA sample upon arrest. In all states with such laws, DNA saliva samples are cataloged in state and federal crime-fighting databases. The issue confronts the government's interest in solving crime balanced against the constitutional rights of those arrested to be free from government intrusion. But, uh, you know, I mean, come on, it's a joke. Private companies own your DNA. This is from 731-2011. So from TechDirt, Mike Mancic made the colorful an uh, analogy of the ruling that this is like arguing that because a severed finger is not attached to a hand, the finger is not naturally occurring and thus patentable. So it is interesting that you could have, like, a court, uh, uh, you know, that's based off what, maritime or political law, uh, tell you what you can and cannot do with your body. And um, you can't do anything about it. I mean, that's, that's just the insanity of it. That's why I don't get why people support this system. Government is collecting our blood for DNA database. So... Is your baby's blood in a DNA database? Well, it is. It says, unless you were born like this individual, uh, basically under a table at home, uh, you might be concerned about the hospitals taking blood samples uh, from your infants, your newborns, in order to screen for genetic disorders, see? So I'm just going to read this and move on here because I've covered it before. Parents in Minnesota and Texas discovered that these states have been storing their baby's blood spots and making the samples available to scientists for medical research without obtaining their permission. So, you know, yeah, you can see where it's going. They own your DNA, and they're extracting it for research in eugenics. Apple rejects application that tracks U.S. drone strikes. You might want to know about that, right? says it seemed like a simple enough idea for an iPhone app sending users a pop-up notice whenever flying robots kill someone in one of America's many undeclared wars. But Apple keeps blocking the Drones Plus program from its Apple store. Therefore, iPhones everywhere. The company says that the content is objectionable and crude, according to Apple's latest rejection letter. See, they, it's like Facebook. They have such high standards, don't they? So this is pretty freaky, guys. Um, I personally, I thought I'd never seen a drone before. Uh, because I do pay attention to the sky with all the chemtrails and aerosols. And the sounds of planes, because I worked in the air wing in aviation, the Marine Corps, for, you know, what? I was in there for five years, so I know different sounds of jets and stuff like that. And I saw one today. I saw one today. For I, I thought it was for the first time, but I think I've seen them before. Uh, and I, I looked up the pictures, and I, and I found this one, and it ended up being a Predator drone. It looked like that. And I saw how it was flying. I heard it coming, and I looked back, and I'm like, oh, what the hell? And then I saw it. It was doing like an arc. And most planes just fly in straight patterns. This thing threw a, did an arc right over where I live. And I saw, oh, that was kind of nice. And then, of course, right after that, then all the aerosols. It came went from a blue sky with some chem clouds to just nothing but uh, uh, pure gray clouds like this. And then, of course, now it's raining. So, but, yeah, that's pretty interesting, you know. I'm over here in the Midwest near the Great Lakes. Rare photographs show ground zero of the drone war. So you can check out some of the pictures here. And while I'm on that note, I just wanted to uh, put something out there for whatever it's worth. Um, you know, apartment complexes are pretty bad. I mean, if you can live on your own property in the rural area or whatever, just have your own property, even in the suburbs where you have a gated community or, or a gate around it, basically, not a gated community. I don't mean that. Um, you know, it's easy to have spies around. I've mentioned that before. 
in apartment complexes and that and it sucks but that's all i can afford so i try to stay aware like the thing with the drones but also i try to stay aware of, of individuals who are possibly spies and i think i've pretty much nailed the ones that are uh, at least snoops you know and um you know they'll be skulking around you know behind the uh, behind the apartment and stuff like that sometimes and happen to show up at certain times and but there's one individual that lives in my apartment complex and it's really weird because it seems like when something big happens nationally uh, he happens to be gone and he actually confronted me once before uh walked right up to my mailbox and stuff like that and uh he just well, he wanted to come up and talk to me but uh it was real cheesy and looked really uncomfortable he was telling me because i was the wonder i'm like who's messing with my computer because my computer has been jacked with man i'll tell you guys it's been jacked with lately yesterday i i didn't even think i was going to get my videos out um someone's hacking my network it's literally just hacking the network uh I, they must have some good sophisticated uh, equipment but uh either way this guy says oh yeah i'm a traveling t uh contractor computer contractor and i'm like oh really you know and he just has the look of a of an agent either a state agent or a federal agent you know bald head uh decent weight and uh you know he's single and uh he no one really talks to him and he's always gone for uh, a couple days here and there well he he was gone during the Colorado shooting. He was gone during the Sandy thing. He was gone uh, around the elections and some other events as well that I can't recall at this time. But it was kind of odd that yesterday when my internet went down, I had an internet connection. I just couldn't get into any pages. Um, that uh, when I walked uh, walked down there, I walked right past them, and uh, and uh, you know he pets my dog and stuff like that. And then of course my internet goes down later. And then uh, later on, I see him packing bags and stuff at night, getting ready to head out of town. So my little warning or whatever is just, uh, you know, something could be happening, something could be brewing. So I'm sorry I drug on about that, but I like to share that stuff with you because that's what goes on behind the scenes here at GGN. Cisco vice president to memo leaker. So this is a good segue. Finding you is my hobby now says uh, Cisco Vice President of the Services Mike Quinn, a former CIA operations officer, believes that whoever recently leaked an internal company memo to a blogger committed corporate treason and violated a family trust, because they're a family company, Cisco, that is. In an email sent to Cisco employees, Quinn invites anonymous leaker to voluntarily step down, concedes that such a confession is unlikely, and adds that, so I will now make finding you my hobby. And to emphasize the point, uh, ask around and you will find out that I like to work on my hobbies. Speaking of Sandy, bitter cold inside a disaster shelter. It's a FEMA camp. You can see your breath. Well, I'm not downing this uh, right now, but uh, I've actually had experiences where I could see my own breath in my own house in the dead of winter when I couldn't, you know, really afford it. I can now, but um, it's kind of interesting because I saw the whole video with Obama crying and stuff like that. And it is kind of emotional. But at the same time, he's talking about how to help people. Well, what about this, you know? He should be on the ground. He should be over there trying to see what the hell is going on over there, you know? But uh, he was uh, he was emotional because it was his ego because he was talking about how all these people helped him get back into power, right? So it was all about him getting helped in, into power again. And then he told all the people, well, you're all going to go out throughout the country and you're going to be great and wonderful and stuff like that. So he gave them an ego boost for getting him into power to boost his ego, so... But I think Obama, uh, someone, I was thinking about it last night, it kind of hit me, guys, is that Obama is a little bit like a Lincoln and a Kennedy. And I, I know that sounds kind of far out there. But I do think that. I, I do think that some, there is a little bit where he may try to um, uh, fight a little bit as far as the Zionists go and uh, the big uh, military-industrial complex. He still believes in, you know, the Federal Reserve System and, 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 and humongous debt and government. But uh, for whatever it's worth... I think the whole thing in Libya with the CIA standing down, kind of like what Kennedy did with the CIA, uh, he he may have to do what he has to do as far as with Iran and attacking. Because if he doesn't, the people that put him there will pull a Kennedy on him. 
So they said the elections are over, and here we are. There are Black Hawk helicopters flying all day and all night with heavy equipment moving past the tents all night. Remember, there was a convoy of National Guard trucks going around as well. No media is allowed inside the fence complex. People are complaining about how they couldn't use the electrical outlets. Every time we plugged in an iPhone or something, the cops would come and unplug them. So they're not allowed to return home, and they say it's like being in a prison. This is GGN. Thank you.